Hello, infidels. It's Saturday, but I wanted to, I didn't want to forget about Good Friday. So today, I, I also want to look back to yesterday, to Good Friday. And it's about Jesus being on the, uh, the cross, of course. This is a Franciscan cross. Remember who St. Francis is? You know, they named San Francisco after St. Francis. Yeah. And then, um, so this is a Benedictine cross. Benedictine cross. This is probably more popular. You see these more. They're crucifix. It is a crucifix. This is more of sort of like an icon type of cross. Design is made in Italy, but there's two different crosses that... Um, expressions of of faith and there there's also religious orders called the franciscan order and the um the benedictine order now this is the Benedict saint benedict was the uh the father of western monasticism we know who saint francis is his love for for nature and god is um really worth to study he said Sister Moon and Mother Sun, Mother Earth, all those things. But he, he believed that the Creator was separate from the creation. But, but he, uh, he saw God in nature. And I, I did a video on God in nature and um, that you guys can check out. But St. Francis certainly had a, a, uh, a uh, creation-centered uh view view of of the world um but of course he stayed you know inside he was very very uh orthodox believer you know he believed that god was separate from creation but but god was in creation expressing himself through these things um because he we know the scripture says he upholds all things by his word so he is in in the the eagle the fish um the deer but he's not the tree or the eagle the fish and the deer but he is in sustaining him so there is something special about creation and as i said in the video before god made all things first even before he made man he made all the creation he didn't make man first then the creation he made the creation first then he put man there as the caretaker so all these things were around even before man was around you know the great sea creatures we love my family loves birding you know we love to identify birds i have red shoulders hawks that piercing cry i just love it and um they're nesting we've got great horned owls at night in in the big pines behind the house so and then, uh, then we've got scrub jays. I've got uh, nesting um, doves. Of course, you get your mockingbirds. And um, then we have, of course, your, your, they call them TVs or turkey vultures. They're the ones that they cruise really high because we're sort of up on a hill here. You know, they get into the jet stream. All the, the wind blows them around. But what they're looking for is carcasses to clean up the environment. You know, God made the turkey vultures because animals don't get buried. They're not buried like human beings. And I got a story. Um, one of my dogs was dying and um, and um, and his, his arm was, was getting, um, uh, starting to have some stench in his, in his paw rather. And it was starting to smell. And, um, and you know, we taken him to the vet and he said, uh, you know, don't, don't, um, we're not going to cut the arm off. We're just going to put him to sleep and, you know, all of this. So we decided that, but he had an odor for a while. And, and sure enough, a TV, a turkey vulture, plopped right in our fence outside, just sat there. Because he smelled, you know, waiting for that dog to die. But they uh, they clean up the environment. They have a purpose too. 
the turkey vultures. But we got them. So they're in my top five, too. They're, they're great. And um, and then we got a lot of, you know, some great crows. That <laughs> they cruise in and out. So we're big birders. Um, but um, this is a good, this is about Good Friday, about, of course, we're talking a little bit about St. Francis and his love for nature and animals. This is Benedict. Benedict was um, the Benedictine cross. Benedict was an abbot. Uh, he ruled, um, well, ruled, he served in monasteries. He was the leader of these orders. And what I learned about Benedict, um, Benedict was very, they have a strict order, but Benedict was a person of mercy. He tried, as best he could, he tried to uh, be kind to the, to the monks. He knew the, the severity and how hard it was, and he showed mercy. I had, when I was in evangelic, I was in evangelical ministry, and uh, but it was um, a little unconventional kind of ministry. It was... Uh, a program where people lived and tried to get over drugs and alcohol. And the program was very strict. And sometimes I would think of Benedict and say, man, I got to be merciful to these poor guys given a year of their lives to seek God and get over their problems. And, um, you know, you had the rules in a program, very strict because, you know, when you're dealing with addiction, but, you know, we got to also show mercy, like Benedict. We got to show mercy <laughs> to, um, to people. And so there's a balance. You got to have, um, you know, justice tempered with mercy. But we, we, if we're going to err, let's err on the side of mercy, because God's merciful to us. And Benedict and Francis were very, very merciful. Now, uh, I wanted to add one more uh, prop, and it's uh, this is uh, Constantine the Great, uh, a cross that he used. It, uh, it's the Kyrie, the Kyrio, the Kyrio in the Greek, but it's a different type of cross. But this was a cross, the, a very ancient cross that they used um, in the in the early. Uh, in 300 A.D., around there, when Constantine, he saw a sign of the cross in the sky, and uh, of this cross here, and it said, "In this sign, you will conquer." And then he won. Ended up after that vision, he won a decisive battle, and Christianity became the the dominant religion of the empire. For 300 years, they were persecuted. The saints, and you know, many died. We know the apostles died, and then the the early church fathers, many of them died uh, with the lions like Ignatius of Antioch. Polycarp was burned at the stake. There's letters these guys wrote that you can read about. It kind of fits, you know, fills in the gaps with the early church. You know, that's why you've got to not only read the scripture, but also the early church fathers to get the whole understanding of the Christian faith. But Constantine came along about 300 years later. It was after guys, emperors like Nero and uh, Caniglia. <laughs> These guys were, they were tough and tough on the Christians and tough on the people. And, uh, but when Constantine came, and his mother was devout too, but in the East they call him Constantine the Great, equal to the apostles. Can you believe that? They give him that title. So, we got to be careful criticizing Constantine. A lot of evangelicals do it. They, I don't think they understand because with Constantine, you got the beautiful liturgical music came uh, above ground into the churches. You got the beautiful arts started to happen. The beautiful they started to paint the icons, but it wasn't all all rosy. It is true that um, people needed to focus on the spiritual more than the temporal. It is true, they did need a message. It was wonderful that, that God's kingdom was spreading, but they did need a message. And, and, um, and that's why they had during that time the rise of monasticism, Anthony of the desert. Anthony went out in the desert and it was a sign to the 
the church that we are not of the world. Even though you have Constantine and all the blessings of God and they're able to drink tea in the emperor's palace now, whereas before they were thrown to the lions. And everybody, you know, that's a blessing to have that favor. And it was God's providence. But at the same time, you had Anthony of the Desert saying, but remember, my friends, we, uh, the kingdom of God is not of this world. And he was a sign to the Christians to stay on the right path, to put God first in the midst of the power of the empire. And um, so that was, um, that's just a little story about uh, Constantine the Great and um, a little bit of church history. So I just wanted to sing one song. And then uh, this is a Good Friday message. And um, I guess we'll just, We'll go back to John Denver again. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains grow. Like the breeze, country road, take me home to the blaze. I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. And then we'll do uh, a little bit of the JT, a little bit of JT in the house. There is a young cowboy, he lives on the range. His horse and his cattle are his only companions. Works in the saddle and he sleeps in the canyons Waiting for summer, his pastures to change And as the moon rises, he sits by his fire Thinking about women in glasses of Closing his eyes as the doggies retire He sings out a song which is soft but is clear As if maybe someone could hear Good night, your moonlight ladies rock a sweet baby Jane Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose She let me go down in my dreams rock a sweet baby Jane Now the first of December is covered with snow so was the turnpike from Stockbridge to Boston. Berkshire seemed dreamlike on account of that. Boston with ten miles behind me, ten thousand more to go. There's a song that they sing when they take to the highway. A song that they sing when they take to the sea A song that they sing of their home in the sky Maybe you can believe it if it helps you to sleep Singing works just fine for me Good night, your moonlight lady 
Rock-a-bye, sweet baby Jane Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose Won't you let me go down in my dream And rock-a-bye, sweet baby, sweet baby Jane Well, this was about Good Friday a little bit late, but always on time. It's wonderful. God bless you guys. Have a great Easter. Try to attend services if you can. And, um, and happy Easter. Bye.